Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Monday of the sixth week of Ordinary Time. Wow, hot time flies. I want you to pay particular attention to Kayla as she reads the first reading for us today. I'd like to really kind of zoom in on that one again, kind of like we did on Friday. I think it's an important one that we should not miss it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's ask God for His mercy. Let's ask him for mercy for all of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, what I've done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next, she bore his son Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of his best firstlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel for his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your head. But if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is toward you, yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out in the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. The Lord asked Cain, Where's your brother Abel? He answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord then said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore, you should be banned from the soil that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, you shall no longer give it, get its produce. You shall become a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to bear. Since you have now banished me from the soil, and I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth, anyone may kill me at sight. Not so, said the Lord. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. So the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone should kill him at sight. Adam again had relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son, whom she called Seth. God has granted me more offspring in place of Abel, she said, because Cain slew him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth, from the rising of the sun to its setting. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate my discipline and cast my words before you? sit speaking against your brother, against your mother's son you spread rumors. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees came forward and began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. He sighed from the depths of his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Amen, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Then he left them, got into the boat again, and went off to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I mentioned that I would like to talk a little bit about the, uh, the first reading here today. And I want to uh, uh, not just zoom in on the first reading, but I want to kind of zoom in a little bit on two particular texts of the first reading, which I think are important for us to ponder. And the first one is simply this. Sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is toward you yet you can be his master. There was a little comic one time that had a conversation between a devil and an angel. And um, the devil turns toward the angel and he says, um, they don't believe in me anymore. Do they believe in you? You know, the older I get and the more I get to observe what goes on in our world today, I think more and more, yeah, I, I believe. There's too much organized evil. The evil in our world today seems to me to be much more than just the result of human stupidity. There seems to be a, a sort of organization of rhyme or reason to it all today. Um, and so, yeah, I, I believe. And in the night prayer for the Liturgy of the Hours, one of the, uh, the scripture texts uh, is... Um, your opponent, the devil, is prowling like a, lore, uh, like, like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. So here we are talking about these unclean spirits, these evil spirits. We've been talking about a lot of that lately. And these evil spirits have a way of attacking us at places where you and I are the weakest. Our fears, our conflicts, our anxieties, our guilt, and our shame. And that's why we're talking a little bit more about this unbound ministry as a way for you and I to be able to resist these evil spirits in our world today. And also, too, I, I just want to make a point about Alpha, which starts this Wednesday. That, too, is a very profound way to resist these evil spirits. Now, I want to, again, share something with you. I, I, I think I may have shared it with you before, but I want to develop the thought a little bit, if I may, before I go on to my, my second verse. And this is a reflection uh, uh, from uh, Dr. Mary Healy in this uh, commentary titled The Catholic Commentary of Sacred Scripture in the Gospel of Mark. And she writes, It is evident that what is needed for this man's salvation is not merely conversion reform of our lives, but deliverance, the expulsion of evil spirits, and their influence that only the Son of God can accomplish for us. Although this is obvious in his case, the case of um, the person that they're talking about here from Scripture, it is also true to a lesser degree for every single one of us. Because, original, because of original sin, Satan has acquired a certain dominion over human beings. In all of us, the image of God is defaced to some degree. Now, I, I read that to you before. But I, what I didn't do before was, was share with you a little bit about the, uh, the catechism references that they make. And I'd like to share that with you here today, uh, just to ponder this very important topic, very difficult topic, just a little bit more. And this is paragraph 407. You're welcome to look that up yourself. It says, the doctrine of original sin, closely connected with that of the redemption by Jesus, provides lucid discernment of man's situation and activity in the world. By our first parent's sin, the devil has acquired a certain dominion over us. Ignorance of this fact, that man has a wounded nature inclined to evil, gives rise to serious errors in the area of education, politics, social action, and morals. 
And then it goes to quote paragraph 109, which also inside of that has a quote from the Second Vatican Council that says, finding him in the midst, finding himself, us, ourselves, in the midst of the battlefield, man has to struggle to do what is right. And it is a great cost to himself and aided by God's grace that he su succeeds by achieving his own inner integrity. Wow, that is a very powerful statement. Finding ourselves in the midst of a battlefield, man has to struggle to do what's right. It is at great cost, this struggle. Um, a lot of anguish, a lot of pain goes into this struggle. And aided by God's grace, that he succeeds in achieving his own inner integrity. So brothers and sisters, let's you and I really, really seek to resist, as we must, all of this being part of our redemption. And then the second text um, uh, that I want to mention, um, am I my brother's keeper? Now, I asked Kevin to, to put up a, uh, a picture right about now um, of this statue from Boys Town in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Remember the movie, some of you, 1938, Mickey Rooney called Boys Town. This talks about how Father Flanagan uh, um, took in these delinquents, these orphan kids, and, and he really tried to help all of them. He created this, this, uh, re, this institution called Boys Town. And in Boys Town, there is a statue, which you're looking at right now, which is called He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. And, and there was a great song in 1970, uh, Kevin just told me, it's by the Hollies, that uh, maybe some of you remember, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. So my point in all this is somebody said, we are deeply connected to one another. We are brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, we would claim that by our baptism, water is thicker than blood. We are brothers and sisters. And, and we talk about this all the time these days. The idea of you and I during this pandemic, always, always trying to stay together, stay connected. How can we do that? All the things that we're doing, like, like liturgy of the word right here, uh, all the things that we're trying to do virtually are attempts on our part to be able to keep us connected, keep us together brothers and sisters together, taking care of one another. And the second point I'd like to make about oh, this one is sometimes we don't realize everybody struggles with, with, with things. And, and we, we think we're the only ones who are struggling here. You know, like every, some people, I, I talk to them all the time. Uh, everybody's marriage is great except for mine. Everybody's life is great except for mine. Everybody's kids are well-mannered, well-behaved, clean, and everything else except for mine. And so we're always comparing ourselves, somehow or other, looking like we're worse off than everybody else. And the point I'm trying to make in all of this, yeah, we're all struggling. Every once in a while, we all can use a lift in some way. So whether our brother is heavy or not, we are brothers and sisters with one another, and we are indeed our brother's keeper. And let me share with you, uh, um, here's my question for today. In the midst of the pandemic, how are you staying connected to your family? to your friends, and most especially to your church. God bless everybody, and looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow.